a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jit Chat Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell, your full AccuWeather weather forecast right across the top of all CNC local news pages. Rochester police were kept busy overnight with a shooting and a suspicious death. First, a 32-year-old Rochester man was hospitalized after being shot on Bay Street on the east side. He was hit in the lower body. His injuries were non-life-threatening. This was at 469 Bay Street. While that investigation was underway, officers were called about 11.30 p.m. to 268 Hamilton Street. There they found the body of a woman, apparently in her 30s. According to police, this is considered a suspicious death, but there's no public word yet on how the woman died. Both investigations are ongoing. The Brighton Town Board has approved a plan to dissolve the West Brighton Fire District and have the Henrietta Fire Department pick up protection for the western part of the town. That doesn't mean this is a done deal. It has to be approved by the current fire district's residents in a referendum following a public hearing April 10th. And Brighton Supervisor Bill Maley says the Henrietta Fire District will staff the West Brighton Firehouse if voters sign off on the plan. That the Henrietta Fire District will staff the West Henrietta Road, station number two, with two paid firefighters, a minimum of eight hours per day, Monday through Friday, with volunteer support at all other hours, at all hours, really. They will initially use a pumper and rescue truck to accommodate both the paid and volunteer uh, response from station two there on West Henrietta Road. Maley told citizens that a special taxing zone will be set up covering the current West Brighton Fire District and the tax revenues will continue to fund fire protection for West Brighton. Maley said the Henrietta operations will stand on their own. Transferring the service is expected to cost about $200,000. Grants may cover some of it. Henrietta Fire Chief Jim Comstock says the plan will not negatively affect fire coverage for his town or increase taxes for Henrietta Fire District residents. West Brighton is currently being staffed by the Rochester Fire Department since Brighton terminated the West Brighton Fire Department's contract in August. That followed a dispute over response times to West Brighton fires raised in a study commissioned by the town, and the town and West Brighton remain in court over control of the firehouse and the department assets. In Hamlin, the town zoning board has approved plans to build a new library on vacant land behind the Hamlin Town Hall. The proposal goes next to the town board. The Hamlin Library is currently a storefront operation in a plaza at 422 Clarkson Hamlin Town Line Road next door to a bar. The library trustees want a more appropriate site that also has meeting space for community needs. The zoning board had to issue a setback variance because the site behind the town hall is too close to the road. It was a 3-2 to two vote in favor. The opponents, including the board chairman, thought the plan was trying to stuff too much building into too little space. They also said there is no room to expand in the future. The project will not cost Hamlin taxpayers any additional money. Most of it is being covered by an endowment left by a Hamlin resident, $600,000 worth. The rest comes from a state construction grant. The town board has a special meeting Monday evening, but the library plan isn't on the agenda. The New York Attorney General's office says a nurse's aide has been arrested for assaulting an 83-year-old female resident of the Park Ridge Living Center in the town of Greece. Attorney General Eric Schneiderman said Groven Glenn was charged with endangering the welfare of a vulnerable elderly person in the second degree, as well as lesser charges. If convicted, Glenn faces as much as four years in prison. The AG's office says a surveillance camera caught Glenn throwing a chicken bone at the woman after she first threw a napkin at him. The video then showed Glenn unlocking her wheelchair and quickly shoving her back to her room. During that process, he slammed her into the door to her room and caused her to suffer bruises. Authorities are identifying the Park Ridge resident only as WG. They say Glenn admitted to what he had done, saying he got angry and couldn't control himself. The Greece Rotary has honored Officer John Ritter as its Person of the Year. The Greece police officer was named a Paul Harris Fellow, receiving the honor for his actions December 24th during the West Webster shooting incident. Officer Ritter has been with the department for 19 years and has won the Greece Police Distinguished Service Award three times. He was on his way to work the morning of December 24th when his truck came under fire from the gunman who had just shot down four West Webster firefighters on Lake Road. 
Officer Ritter backed his truck up to the intersection of Lake and Bay, and there he blocked traffic, keeping the other firefighters out of the gunman's field of fire. His actions saved the lives of those other first responders who would have headed right into the gunman's ambush. Tonight, the Webster Rotary Club honors Webster officer Mark Reed in the same fashion with the same award. Officer Reed will also be named a Paul Harris Fellow for his role in the Christmas Eve tragedy. Lakeside Health System is inviting Brockport area residents to a neighborhood meeting Thursday evening to answer questions about its reorganization plan. Lakeside is closing the inpatient hospital and its emergency department later this year because of financial losses and changing community needs. Instead of a place where people stay while they recover, it'll be a diagnostic and outpatient treatment center affiliated with the larger University of Rochester Medical Center and Strong Hospital in the city. The meeting starts at 6. It's at the Sweden Senior Center in the village of Brockport. One of the Seneca Park Zoo's most popular animals has died. Zoo officials announced Flounder, the 21-year-old male sea lion, passed away in his sleep. Flounder was pretty elderly for a sea lion. They have an average life expectancy of a little more than 19 years. He was being treated for age-related joint pain at the time of his death, and a necropsy will be conducted to determine the cause. Flounder was born in the Seneca Park Zoo. He was the last survivor of a group that once lived in the main zoo building before development of the Rocky Coasts exhibit, where the sea lions are now housed in a more natural habitat. The zoo doesn't plan to immediately replace Flounder. Two other sea lions, Lily and Marina, are currently living in Rocky Coasts. Chai Lai firefighters were called out Wednesday afternoon to Andony Lane for a report of gasoline fumes in a home. Firefighters found there were gasoline fumes in several houses on the street. They declared a hazmat situation, flushed out the storm sewers, and that dissipated the fumes. They're investigating to find out where that gasoline came from. You'll find links to these and other stories to the left of the player window at the bottom of the page in the gray bar. Links you can use to post news and information directly to us. What you share with us helps determine the stories that you get here on your CNC news pages. So forward uh, what you know and what you want us to cover on to us. Next news is as it happens, updates as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.